on the John Anchorberg Show. What should parents know about Harry Potter? Over 100 million books have been sold in over 200 countries, and Harry Potter has been translated into more than 40 languages. Three, two, one. Why would I go listen to something like the song? One survey reports that over a half of all children in America, between the ages of six and seventeen, have read at least one of the Harry Potter books. Are these books harmless fantasy stories or through fantasy? Introducing real principles of witchcraft and sorcery to our children. Today, John's guests are filmmaker, author, and occult expert, Carol Matriciana, author and founder of Rafa Counseling Centers, Robert McGee, and author and columnist, Derek Cook. We invite you to join us. Welcome. Do you think that the Harry Potter books are just good fantasy? Or they fantasy stories that introduce our children to the principles of witchcraft, occultism, and sorcery. Well, filmmaker, author, and occult expert Carol McCriciana, along with her husband, has filmed and documented the rituals and practices of witchcraft around the world. I asked her to compare the witchcraft she has filmed with the witchcraft that's presented in the Harry Potter book. So, book number one actually is much more, if you will, a basic 101 in witchcraft, a basic 101 of where. J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter series, is going to take us. Book number one establishes occult language, establishes occult tools, uh, that it got tools of the trade of witchcraft that are going to be used in Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, the thousand-year-old most famous school in Europe of occultism. The teachers are going to be established in book one. Uh, the, each of the classes is defined, what transfiguration means, what divination means, what the purpose of astrology, numerology, arithmetic, whatever the subjects are, potion mixing, herbology, all these things, which, by the way, are practiced today in the craft of occultism, paganism, neo-paganism, and specifically in this craft. Now, not all the things that J.K. Rowling talks about are practiced by all witches. Today's witchcraft is much more serendipitous. Uh, today's witches can pick and choose. Today, neo-paganism is a popuri. It's no longer the disciplined black art, which perhaps 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, certainly um, the, the seers of old took their dark arts very seriously. And the study of dark arts was involved the disciples, the devotees, in strong discipline. Today, with the modern concept of um, instant enlightenment, um, being able to pick and choose, going into the internet, having a vast array of books around, uh, today's wishes actually can be a solitary wish. to somebody that does it all on their own, going through the internet, going through witchcraft, or they can um, be involved in covens of 13 or less, or in actual schools of magic or witchcraft like the Alexandrian or the Guardian schools. Now, if the claim that the Harry Potter books are presenting the principles of witchcraft, I think we need to define what witchcraft is. The Encyclopedia of Witches and Witchcraft states, Witchcraft is not united or cohesive by any means. There's no central authority or liturgy. Various traditions have their own rituals philosophy and belief. And it's become increasingly acceptable to initiate oneself into the craft and practice alone rather than as part of a coven. So how can we get a handle on what witchcraft is? C.S. Lewis said that there are two worldviews, biblical one and the world of paganism. And that basically is the bottom line. Now within those two worldviews, there are many, many, many denominations because human beings are who, who humans are, and they always want to reform, correct, be more strict, be more disciplined, and pursue a certain teacher, leader, and they're a breakaway group. And we see it within the biblical worldview, within Orthodox Jews, within the Christians, the many, many, many denominations that are under 
supposedly being led by the God of the Bible. The same thing happens on the other side. The worldview of paganism can have many, many, many different denominations and ethnic groups, whether they come from Africa, India, um, Haiti, South America, wherever it is. Their blend of cultural civilization with their history, whether they come from American Indians or Haiti, whatever their background of history is, all that can be pulled into various different mixtures, if you will. So today, more than ever, paganism is a tactic. And especially now that the modern child can just pick this, no, I don't want to suck any human beings, this, I don't want that, I don't want to kill an animal, I don't want to do such grotesque things as this or this or this, I just want to be uh, light and just to be able to do good spells and good magic. And so they will draw from these certain things. That's why there can be witches that just are so solitary witches. Because they just want to draw from what they perceive to be good. So what one witch will say is good, perhaps another one won't. What one witch says is loathsome, another won't think so. But then they ask, is there anything about which witches do agree? The answer is yes. In the book, Harry Potter manipulates forces to cast spells to make patience talk to spirits. He does this to bring about what he wants. Contemporary witches manipulate forces just like Harry does although they may call it something different. For example, the Encyclopedia of Witches and Witchcraft tells us, for pagans and witches, magic is a part of everyday life. The world itself is magical. Not all pagans and witches practice the same types of magic. Some may prefer ceremonial magic, while others prefer folk magic, and still others prefer ecological magic based on natural earth energies and the resident spirits of the land. But I want you to notice, that all witches do use the power of magic. The whole reason that they get involved in witchcraft is to gain power, is to gain control. That's the whole purpose of witchcraft, to be able to take control of your life, to change circumstances, to bring about what you want. And the only way you can do that is through power. Now, it's a question of what you call that power. You call it mind science, do you call it mental gymnastics? Do you call it your inner potential? Do you call it tapping into outside forces? Do you call it opening yourself up to demon possession and spirit being spirit guides? Whatever the terminology is, that's human rationalization. Now, another way to understand what witchcraft is is to look at some of the practices in contemporary witchcraft. One we can ask, are these practices similar to what Harry Potter and his friends do in the book? The Encyclopedia of Wicca and Witchcraft tells us, Today, the arts of witchcraft include herbalism, divination, magic, ceremonial ritual, healing, potions, and parent world contact with familiars, that is, animal spirits, or elementals, that is, spirits of earth, air, fire, or water. Within the magical world, it is understood that you can manipulate forces, to bring about an artificial end, to bring about signs and wonders and miracles, or you can use demonic powers to do it. What witchcraft claims is that they're only using natural forces. They're using the spiritual laws to bring about what they want. But God tells us not to be involved in any of those outside His spiritual leading because He gives us spiritual ends within the balance of love and faithfulness and mercy that comes from his good character. The other side is able to give the destructive, horrible aspects by luring young children into the hope that they can have what they want. But the results can be totally devastating. So the first one, eight pounds. The second one, three pounds. And the third one, four pounds. But aren't the Harry Potter book harmless fantasy stories? Well, the spells in the Harry Potter books are just like the spells that are in the, the world of witchcraft today. Witchcraft having the center of witchcraft and occultism for the throughout history. What is the worldview that is being presented to children in the Harry Potter books? That is what Harry Potter is teaching children 
packaging is going to their level, making it extremely appealing. It is urgent to be involved in this stuff. So it's just fantasy. It's just fairy tale. It doesn't exist. But the principles in Harry Potter's book do exist in the world of this stuff. And Harry goes to the Hogwarts school of this stuff and music. And we're saying that he doesn't encounter elements of witchcraft. I mean, what are the spells, what are the curses, what are all the things that, that Harry goes through? To learn whether the Harry Potter books and movies are introducing our children to the principles of witchcraft and the occult, we're making available a special package of television programs. The first series, containing seven half-hour television programs, is entitled, What Are the Harry Potter Books All About? The second series is entitled, Harry Potter, Witchcraft Repacking. It explains how witchcraft has been repackaged to be extremely appealing to children. These two series are available for only $79. Third, we're making available a special magazine entitled, What Parents Should Know About Harry Potter. It is an in-depth analysis of the first four Harry Potter books in light of the Bible. This valuable magazine is available for just $12. And finally, if you'd like to have all of these materials, that is both series plus the magazine. They are available together in a special package for only $85. To order now, you may call 1-800-805-3030. You know that Harry Potter and his friends are constantly learning new spells, charms, and curses to direct energy for their own purposes. The Encyclopedia of Wicca and Witchcraft informs witches of knowledge of various herbs, enchantments, charms, and spells help to fine-tune one's ability to direct energy. Like anything else in life, they say, practice is required in order to become skillful. Now, isn't this the very reason Harry's going to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry to practice his magic skills? The Encyclopedia of Wicca and Witchcraft also informs us Psychic development is a very useful tool. It helps one to discern things of a non-physical nature. Oh, really? This is important because if a person practices magic, he or she is eventually going to encounter non-physical entities. Psychic senses can help to perceive both the presence and the actions of various spirits and elemental creatures. Now, again, this is exactly what happens to Harry in the book. He develops his psychic senses a little more each year. It helps him as he encounters various spirits and elemental creatures, like the giant snake guarding the Chamber of Secrets. Now, why do you think J.K. Rowling accurately portrays in her stories concepts and practices taught in real books about witchcraft? I think the principle in learning books is that spells work, perfect work, that is power behind certain rituals, there is power behind certain potions, there is a power that children can call on. Throughout Harry's books, his magic works, his curses work. The teachers are there to constantly be training the children, showing the children that plugging into certain energies and powers with certain ceremonies work. Predictions work. Fortune telling work. Palm reading work. Potion mixing work. Harry waves his wand at work. Baltimore waves his wand at work. Curses work. The monsters are scared because they can suck your souls out. These are all principles of occultism. That there are more evil spirits around that can do evil, evil things. That's why we should cast circles. That's why they put a protection there hoping that they can protect themselves against what they don't know, but being able to draw from the power that they think that they can control. Of course the Harry Potter books teach children a pagan worldview and the concepts, the principles, the elements of magic with a K, the art of changing what you want changed through mental thinking. Now, if there's one thing that all Wiccans agree about, that they have nothing to do with Satanism. And from their point of view, that's true. But from a biblical worldview, spells, charms, symbols, spirit contact, and psychic abilities 
has ultimately come about because people have believed information that originated with a powerful evil angel called Satan and other evil angels that follow him. There are those that argue that Harry Potter doesn't point to Satanism because he doesn't mention Satan. But remember the Bible tells us that Satan comes as a deceiver and Satan's title a father of lies, author of confusion and angel of light. The sources behind witchcraft are what we have to look to. The source, the power source of witchcraft comes from the side that God tells us clearly to stay, stay away from, which is the satanic demonic realm. So to say that it's not Satanism and what's, what, what's the problem, it doesn't mention Satanism and they're not invited across it. The rituals of Satanism that many Satanists do are involved in it, but it doesn't matter. The rituals that are practiced in Harry Potter's school of Hogwarts with Christ and Wizardry are told to us that God wants us not to be involved in it. Divination, walking through fire, sorcery, drawing circles, the, the Hebrew word, of drawing lines and circles in order to have um, wonder, wondrous miracles, in order to work wonders. All these things are being taught in Harry Potter. And the source that Harry and all his peers are directed towards is a source that we in the scriptures are told not to be involved in because God knows that they are going to be rooted in opposition to him. Now, what else do witches believe? And what impact is witchcraft having on our children? And finally, will the Harry Potter book add to that impact? A guardian, the watcher of the I, Issa, I think it's a myth, who summon and serve I command by presence at this our meeting to guard over our circle and to witness our rights. Witchcraft is the fastest growing option of paganism and neo paganism today. Hundreds of thousands of children and teenagers are joining its rights according to reports from an ever increasing number of pagan websites. The Pagan Federation of England claims their mail bags swell by the thousands from farm teenagers every time a particularly exciting episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer airs on TV, or an enticing article on witchcraft appears in a popular teen magazine. Witchcraft, or Wicca as it is known, believes in revering the mother goddess, the global environment, feminist practices, and nature. One of the important things to remember about the symptom of witchcraft is that the feminine aspect, the female, is more important than the male. The feminine uh, side of um, the human being, the, of mankind, is of more magical power. And we see this in the fertility cults, and that we see it in all pagan religions, where it goes back to the female being the one that is revered. She is the goddess. And in Harry's book, we see the female aspect of Harry's mother, the goddess, coming in. She supposedly protected Harry before Harry was to be killed by Lord Baltimore. And by putting her incredible love towards Harry, this action disrupted the male power of Baltimore and the male magic of Baltimore backfired on him. The holy rule or rule, do what you want as long as it harms no one, is Wicca's most appealing draw, encouraging its adherents to indulge in self gratification and self centeredness while allowing more to shift its will. Wicca teaches there is no absolute truth or sin and replaces the patriarchal male creator God of the Bible with a belief in both male and female God. The, I think the, the thing that bothers me is the symbology in Harry Potter. Having come from an occult background and understanding occult symbology, what that means, a young reader is being introduced to pagan symbols, demented symbology, and with it, it brings the distortion of what the true symbol is in the Bible. We also are told in the Bible that the blood sacrifice is very, 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 very important. And Christ died in order to save us from our sins through the shedding of his own blood. It is so. This is taken in a satanic form, and here we have Harry's mother, through her act of sacrificial 
uh, uh, giving, giving her life sacrificially for Harry, this incredible act of love, again, an upside down inversion of the love of God for us who died for us to give us eternal life, Harry's mother, through her love, gives Harry flesh that can powerfully hurt somebody, a, a demonic being that somebody possesses. His blood, they can make spirits come to life. So we see children learning horrible inversions of very profound, wonderful, holy truths that come from the Bible. Most children in witness believe they must communicate with supernatural spirits, which they refer to as forces of nature, in order to receive wisdom and power from magical skills. They also embrace the concept of self-empowerment by awakening internal spirituality through meditation, visualization, and other mind-altering techniques of self-hypnosis. Dimly lit parlors or New Age fairs are no longer the only places to practice secret magic, fortune-telling, spell-casting, or potion magic. As a result of aggressive marketing campaigns, a wide variety of witchcraft techniques offering powers of control for personal achievement can now be found in bookstores, on the internet, in public schools and libraries, and throughout the media. Hollywood's presentation of witchcraft, as exciting and glamorous, has further increased its appeal to young audiences. Enhanced by digital technology and revolutionary special effects, occultic spells and rituals are given visually stunning portrayals as are the depictions of supernatural beings, ghosts, demons, vampires, mythological characters, and even space A growing number of cartoons and television dramas aimed at increasingly younger audiences further seduce children with the allure of sorcery and divination. Occultic themes are frequently woven into the storylines of prime time series which has undoubtedly contributed to the practice of magic as being the fastest growing mystical attraction among humans. Robert McGee is an author and founder of the Rafa Counseling Center. What effect does he believe the Harry Potter books will have on children? One of the most disturbing things about the Harry Potter books is it teaches children that witchcraft is for children. It does this by allowing children to read about other children in a school setting and watching these children learn how to use spells and all the other elements of witchcraft. They teach these children that witchcraft is just not for adults, but that children can access the power and use this power also. You can say there is no real power in witchcraft, but you can have no problem with the Harry Potter book. But there are two problems in the line of reason. First of all, you can deny the experience of hundreds of thousands of people with practice witchcraft and deviation. Plus, you're saying that God's warning in the Bible about divination, sorcery, and all the elements of which is actually working. Each year, thousands of teens are turning their backs on Christianity and joining witches' covenants in order to learn spells so as to pass school exams, attract boyfriends or girlfriends, and get rich. The secretary of the Magic Circle's Young Magician Club credits the Harry Potter book as the latest rage which he says has rekindled the childlike approach to the fact that the impossible may be possible. He gives thanks to Harry, who he says has sparked the interest in pure magic, real magic, strong magic. Now, if you're a parent, I think you already know that you're responsible before God for protecting your children from the deceptive allurements of witchcraft. If you're a pastor, you also know that you're responsible to God for teaching and warning your congregation about witchcraft sorcery and the occult. And at this moment in history, I believe that means you need to speak out about the Harry Potter book. Possibly the tapes in this series maybe it helped you in doing that. Listen. They are wizards. Oh. What are the Harry Potter books all about? It's disgusting to see a human being cut his arm off a, a servant for the love of his master mutilate his own body, put it into a cauldron. What kind of ideas is this giving children? I'm telling you, the people who just simply set back on this issue and are pastors might as well join the other side. 
because our children already are over on the other side. And what we see in the Harry Potter book is children being desensitized to the horrible aspects of the spiritual world, of human beings sucking blood, of cannibalism, of human beings killing or chopping off their own arms or killing one another in magic rituals, in potions to make them more powerful. If, if somebody doesn't understand that this is part of the agenda of our culture, then they will not see anything wrong with Harry Potter. But aren't the Harry Potter book harmless fantasy stories? That is just fantasy is a minor answer. We need to think about that because obviously we judge fantasy. We wouldn't give our children some Playboy magazines that have some kind of uh, story in it that very sexual nature that was fanciful. Obviously we wouldn't do that. We wouldn't give them uh, a book that had to do with tremendous violence. We wouldn't do that either. So what we really are saying is we do not believe there's anything that looks like. To learn whether the Harry Potter books and movies are introducing our children to the principles of witchcraft and the occult, we're making available a special package of television programs. The first series, containing seven half-hour television programs, is entitled, What Are the Harry Potter Books All About? The second series is entitled, Harry Potter Witchcraft Repackaged. It explains how witchcraft has been repackaged to be extremely appealing to children. With the actual footage of witches, their rituals, spells, and interviews, to learn the parallels that exist between the Harry Potter stories and witchcraft today. These two series are available for only $79. Third, we're making available a special magazine entitled, What Parents Should Know About Harry Potter. Gives an in-depth analysis of the first four Harry Potter books in light of the Bible. It also documents in which book J.K. Rowling describes an evil spirit possessing a human being, with the circle that witches draw for their rituals is cited. Human sacrifice and blood are used in a dark occult ritual, where other occult symbols and practices are described, and where death is said to be the next great adventure. You'll also find important questions to ask your children if they have read any of the Harry Potter books. This valuable magazine is available for a gift of $12. And finally, if you'd like to have all of these materials, that is both series plus the magazine. They are available together in a special package for only $85. To order now, you may call 1-800-805-3030. That's 1-800-805-3030. We may order these materials at our website at www.johnanchorberg.org.